Okay, welcome to my uh, Friday afternoon, everybody. It is, uh, I don't even know what day it is. Friday, June 18th. It's uh, not 91 degrees. It's a whole hell of a lot hotter than that. Uh, what's it gonna say, what's it gonna say? 93, it says, and I beg to differ. I'll go check my garage. It's about 95, 96 out here in the shade. We're sweating our balls off and drinking beer. So anybody that's offended by that, change the channel now, because there's gonna be a lot more beer drinking. Uh, <laughs> we are uh, doing our prep on the bikes uh, for our cannonball run trip that's going to commence uh, just shy of two weeks from now. Uh, we've got about a week and a half worth of prep. Uh, Adrian is leaving town, going to Florida on vacation for uh, uh, a week or something like that, and then he's going to come back right before the end of the month, and then we're leaving on July 1st. So, uh, order of business today is we're doing valve maintenance on both bikes because they're both overdue. Uh, he's got just over 5,000 miles on his. I've got just under 5,000 on mine, and uh, they're due at 4,000, so we're about 1,000 miles out. Uh, we're going to do the valve maintenance. Uh, engines are cold. They're ready for that. Uh, we haven't done it on these bikes, but I've done it on plenty of others. It's not that big a deal. It's just how do we get in there is the question. Um, we've got our service manual that's telling us what to do. Uh, we're going to go through that. What do we have? What do we have? We've got... Valve clearance, uh, you got to take out the caps, no rings, and all the stuff, and uh, leg shield, and all that little stuff. Um, so we're going to do that. Uh, next order of business is I have to replace my exhaust. Uh, I'll do a little sub video for that. Uh, it's the uh, SP Takagawa uh, pea shooter exhaust, uh, which Adrian has already installed on his bike. we got the same exhausts, and the only reason that I'm changing the exhaust is because we need to be able to hook up the trailer. Uh, this is Adrian's trailer that hasn't been fully assembled yet. Uh, we've put it all together minus the rear wheel. Uh, we're still truing it up because it had uh, some pretty severe wobble. Uh, so I was showing him how to true a wheel using the, the truing stand here and adjusting the spokes and all that. And we've got a little bit of uh, radial run out that we need to solve. It's not bad, but it could cause a little bit of hopping. Uh, but mostly it was lateral run out that was pretty excessive. Uh, we're talking a quarter inch. <laughs> it was bad. And there were just a bunch of spokes that were st completely loose. You could tap them and they would go thud, 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 and you could wiggle them by your fingers. So those are going to be tightened up. Uh, but otherwise, Kipmoto did a great job. Uh, he spent extra time trying to build this custom hoop for us. Uh, and I think it'll be great. Uh, we haven't tested it to make sure it fits yet, so verdict is still out. But uh, he made this hoop uh, according to all the diagrams and pictures and measurements and everything that I sent him. And he said he thinks he's got it nailed down. It's, it should work. I, I hope everything is going to work well. Uh, and that's the only reason that we're changing the exhausts out is because we've got to have room for that uh, trailer mount to be able to articulate up and down right here. And the factory exhaust does not give you any clearance at all. Uh, to that right side uh, axle bolt. So, my concern uh, with these exhausts is I rode Adrian's bike uh, for a scooter meetup that we did uh, two weeks ago, I guess. Maybe it was last weekend. I, I can't keep track. <laughs> these guys on these uh, two-stroke Vespas, they're hauling balls. Uh, Adrian's bike is not handling quite straight. It's, it's kind of uh, undulating side to side. I think he's got his rear axle uh, set a little crooked on this. Uh, he took the rear wheel off of it to replace the tire recently, and he may not have it quite straightened up. Something's not right. It's definitely not uh, tracking quite straight. And it's running lean, it sounds like, feels like because it's down on power. So if that's the case, we need to get the uh, programming uh, cable for the uh, PowerVision 3 and the licenses uh, set up so I can tune these things before we hit the road if we're gonna have to use these exhausts. <laughs> They're racing. I was riding it, he had some handling issues because his swing arm got loose when he pulled all this apart. We found that, he solved that, uh, so that was easy. Uh, but his engine was way down on power compared to my bike, and I'm concerned that it's running too lean because of this exhaust. So if that's the case, I need to order my uh, Dynojet PowerVision 3 cable that connects to this ECU and a license for each of our bikes so I can reflash these bikes and bring up the uh, air-fuel mixture a little bit so it's not running lean. But, anywho, 
we're going to take a break here for a minute uh, and get all this stuff staged up, and uh, I'll bring you back into our festivities. Yeah, so this is on an interior shaded wall of my garage, uh, and the temperature is reading 104 in here right now. So, yeah, it's a little toasty outside. <laughs> that official temp of 92 or 94, yeah, I knew that was BS. It's hot. Okay, we're out here sweating our balls off still, and it's definitely Dosaki's time. It's five o'clock somewhere, right? Uh, we're digging into this. First time doing the uh, valve maintenance, and the owner's manual, sorry, service manual says replace that inner leg shield, I, no, I don't think we need to. Uh, Adrian went through the trouble of yanking it out of there and I'm popping my loose and looking at this and I, I don't know, it didn't look like I need to. You can see there's plenty of clearance right here. I can get that cap out of there without moving this inner leg shield, which is actually behind this piece. So I don't know what they're saying. Uh, I might find that I'm wrong in just a second, but I don't know. I'm gonna pull the, uh, access covers off the side and I'll also pull the spark plug just to make this thing easier to rotate uh, pull these out rotate it around a top dead center make sure that both uh, rockers are loose and then you know you're on your compression stroke and valves are closed top dead center and get after it okay more dead soldiers I think I'm three down maybe four down I don't know Super yours was loose too yeah mine I had torqued in but it wasn't quite tight. Usually the, uh, the recommended procedure is you tighten them up, you run them for a little bit, uh, and then you check them again because they kind of loosen themselves a little bit. Uh, we're, repla we're removing the plugs right now to make it easier to turn the engine over. I'm having trouble getting that back uh, valve cover cap bolt out of there. Uh, it is really tight. Uh, I started rounding off the head of it. It's so tight. Uh, the bottom ones weren't so bad, but this front one right here, I had to put a 3 8 inch ratchet on it and give it probably 45, 50 foot pounds of torque before it broke loose. So that back one is really stuck. Um, I think I'm just gonna put a box in wrench on it, grab a piece of pipe to give me some more leverage and, <clears throat> and hopefully I, uh, I don't round off that bolt, but we're gonna see how it goes. Uh, so yeah, anyway, uh, we pulled the uh, access covers out. You can see his, mine looks the same. Uh, we're going to rotate the engines over in just a minute and get them at uh, top dead center on compression. Here's your plug. Okay, so his plug is, uh, yeah, that's that's running lean right there. That's running hot. If you see a bunch of white scorching, it's definitely running lean. So we're going to move up one heat range. I've already replaced mine. Uh, excuse me, I have the hiccups. Thanks to Dos uh, This is the CPR 6EA. Uh, and that's the normal heat range plug. I have already replaced mine right before our last road trip with the uh, 7EA, which is the hotter heat range for extended high speed running. So we're gonna replace his with the, the hotter plug. And mine with the factory exhaust, factory intake and everything, you can see, let me get them side by side here. Sorry, you guys are not seeing squat. Um, you can see mine looks a little healthier. It's newer, which helps the situation, but it doesn't have that white scorching. Uh, so that means that mine is not running overly lean. So I don't know if his has just started running lean because of that exhaust or if that's uh, an indication of uh, just the plug not being the right heat range for the crazy shit we've been doing to it. But anywho, uh, we're replacing his with a, a hotter range today. And uh, then hopefully, uh, my exhaust won't make mine run too lean to be uncomfortable. We'll find out. All right, so we took an intermission and I'm chewing cookies. It's hot out here, oh my God. We went inside and ate a whole bunch of chips and dip and salsa. Now I'm eating cookies as my dessert and I'm about to follow it with another Dos Equis. Have I mentioned that it's hot? I haven't gotten any further in mine yet because we took an intermission. <laughs> I still got to get that back cap nut out of there. It's really tight. So I'm going to go grab uh, something out of the garage to give me a little bit more leverage and hope that I don't round that thing off. Adrian got his apart, and uh, he was searching for a top dead center. So we're going to roll his over, slip the feeler gauges in there, and see if we can get it correct. Uh, I do have... Where'd they go? 
What are those motion pro wrenches? Did, were they still over here? Uh, no, right here. Grabbed a couple of motion pro wrenches. Uh, I don't remember which one is for which, so I labeled them. But basically, the uh, little valve uh, cap nut is uh, 10 millimeter. I no, sorry, three millimeter. Whatever the little uh, adjuster thing is, uh, three millimeter. Yeah, and then the outer lock nut is either nine or ten. So I got one of each, uh, but both of these are three millimeter. I labeled them so I didn't lose them. Sorry, I don't know if you guys are seeing that. Anyway, we're going to get in there and do the adjustments. And then uh, I'm going to pull my exhaust off and uh, do my exhaust and give it a run test, make sure I don't have any leaks, make sure I'm not running overly lean. I'll do a little quick road test with it and uh, see where we go from there. Catch you in a bit. Okay. And I'll sit down on the ground over here next to it. I don't know if you guys are going to see what I'm seeing. Rotate mine around to find the T mark. Oh, I see something. Can't quite read it from where I am. Maybe I need to get down lower, don't I? Look at that. It's got marks on there. I'm gonna go around again. This should be about. I passed a dot. I passed another dot. Oh, it's rotating fast. I got the plug out of there, so. Ah, there we go. Okay, so what do we got? I see marks, but I don't see a T. Is that T? Can you guys read it? Yeah, yeah. Can anybody read that? Okay, so I've gone around several times and I keep missing it, but that's it. You're probably not gonna be able to focus in on that very well. Hang on, sweetie. Uh, Hang on, I'm, uh, oh, it's a donut, you can have it. Uh, yeah, so anyway, there's a F or a something, and then there's two marks right here. Uh, and it, you wanna get this notch lined up with the two marks on the uh, flywheel or you know, stator, whatever the hell that is. Uh, so yeah, I'm dead center between it. Now, I don't know if I'm on the compression side or exhaust side, so I've gotta check my two valve uh, rockers and make sure that they're free, but I still have to get that uh, last bolt out of there. Okay, we've been playing around with uh, Adrian's bike, getting the uh, measurements as good as we can get it. Uh, I don't have the measurements up in front of me from the owner's manual, so I'll throw those on the screen here in a second. But the smallest or thinnest gauge that I've got is 0 0.005 millimeter, uh, or 0 0.005 inches, sorry, which is uh, 0.127 uh, millimeters. So 0 0.005 inch, 0.127 millimeter. And that's actually higher than the maximum setting for our intake valve. Uh, 0.12 I think would be the maximum on the intake. So what we're doing is we're just getting it as tight as we possibly can against this feeler gauge, locking it down and then slipping this thing out. And if we can't get it back in there, we're assuming that that's about right. <laughs> this is not exact science, but uh, we're, we're getting it as close as we can. And then the next closest that we have, which is right in the middle of the range is 0 0.007 inch uh, or 0.178 millimeters. Uh, I hope that's showing up on screen. So anyway, uh, we got his set and locked down. We're gonna put his caps back on. I'm gonna do mine now. Uh, and I my intake valve is already loose because I can slip this uh, 0.127 millimeter or 0 0.005 inch uh, in here somewhat easily. Uh, it slips in and out easily. So that tells me that my intake is very loose. Uh, we're way outside of spec uh, for this one at 4,000 miles. So I've got it in there right now. I don't know if you guys can see that but it's it's in there slides in pretty easy once i get the angle set correctly uh slips in and out without any difficulty at all so that tells me it's loose so we're going to put this in there this is the three millimeter uh little head size or you know the the square nut and a 10 millimeter sorry nine millimeter uh lock nut so we'll do this first i'm gonna undo the lock nut i think and it's tight Ah, it's real tight. Okay, so now how we're doing this is, sorry, I hope I'm keeping you guys on camera. It's very hard to do this with chest rig and reaching in here in confined quarters. Uh, what I'm doing is uh, I'm throwing the, the feeler gauge in, getting it between the little tappet screw, the rocker screw adjuster, whatever you want to call it, and uh, the valve stem. I say I am. 
can't get it in there now. Uh, and then I'm just tightening the uh, the thumb screw of the adjuster down to get it uh, in there, very snug, but not so snug that I can't pull it out because it will deform the gauge slightly uh, as it pinches it in. So. Sorry about the lighting. Uh, you guys probably can't see squat. I can see it, but it's pinched in there right now. I'm going to snug it and then back it off about an eighth of a turn and see if I can slide the gauge out. No, I can't, so back it out a tiny bit more. Still can't get the gauge out. About an eighth of a turn. And now the gauge slips out. So, uh, the trick here is tightening the lock nut without adjusting this at the same time uh, to maintain that clearance. Uh, it's pretty standard valve adjustment procedure. There's nothing fancy about this. It's just that in the Cubs case, it's very tight in here. Hard to get it to this angle. And the gauges are absolutely wafer thin. I mean, it's the thinnest gauge that I've got and it's still too big. <laughs> Crazy. Okay, so I'm back in there. I'm gonna tighten this up to where it's snug. Back it off a hair to slide my feeler gauge out. Yep, that's it. So I'm holding it steady. And now I'm gonna crank the, uh, the lock nut on the wrench side of this. I say I am, if I can get it seated on there. There it is, oh, I just turned the valve adjustment. Okay, there it is. Hold that steady and just give it a good crank. And now make sure I can slip my feeler gauge out. Slip right out. Okay, so as long as I can't slip it back in, I should be less than this clearance. Sorry, I'm really trying to keep you guys on camera. Oh, it's tight in here, man. I wonder how this is going to be on the super, uh, trail cub, CT125. I bet it's going to be easier. There's no engine trout or uh, leg shield. Okay, that's it. I can't get it back in there, so that's set. I'm gonna do the exhaust the same way. It's uh, in the middle range, so it's a little easier to uh, assume that we're in the proper spec uh, than the uh, the intake, because it's so thin, but that's that. Uh, same procedure, just slip this in there, lock it down, make sure that you can get a, a good drag on it coming in and out, and you know you're right in the middle of the adjustment range, and lock it down, put the covers on. Okay, so down here, on level with the action, uh, we finished up the adjustment uh, on intake and exhaust. Uh, Honda says to remove this little inner shield. You don't need to. Uh, it's just wasted effort, wasted time. So I'm going to put the little pop clips back in that and uh, call it a day. So you don't need to pull these uh, outer bolts or the little pop clips here for this shield. It's not in the way at all. Uh, you can get in here and do the valve adjustment without messing with that. Uh, so when you get done, Obviously, you want to use feeler gauges to make sure that you've got it right, but uh, when you finish tightening that up, you should be able to wiggle these and feel just a tiny, tiny bit of slack. Not a lot, uh, and the exhaust is going to have a little bit more than the intake, but both of them you should feel a tiny little click or uh, uh, slack in there to know that you've got uh, clearance uh, while they're cold because when they heat up, things are going to change. So anyway, that's that. Uh, I'm going to put the caps back on this, put the plug back in, and now I'm going to pull my exhaust to uh, uh, upgrade to that little pea shooter so I've got clearance for the trailer. Catch you in a bit.